here is Pastor Obi. Hi everyone, how you doing? Good to have you join us this evening. Please let me know if you can hear me very well, wherever you are, wherever part of the world you're connected, connecting from. If it is good evening, good evening. If it's good afternoon, good afternoon. And I'm happy you are joining us today. Um, we're running a series and um, hopefully, hopefully we're going to end that series today and it's all about personal transformation you know the year's theme is all about growth we are trusting god this year for growth we are trusting god this year for increase we are trusting god this year for expansion and the holy spirit has been giving me different different instruction topics word to teach to facilitate this growth that we are believing and trusting for. And he was telling me that personal transformation is key, very key to growth. Because until you change, you will not grow. That is the truth. I don't know if you know about reptiles. Reptiles, how they grow is that they shed their skin. If they don't shed their skin, they cannot grow. So they must go through a process of change for them to grow and at times shedding that skin is painful in fact today i was scrolling through social media which i rarely do and i saw a video and it was so interesting of a chameleon that is shedding his skin and he was eating his skin so he was pulling the skin off from his tail and eating the molten skin you know so it is not an easy process if he, do, if he doesn't shed his skin or her skin, they will not grow. It's the same thing with us. You know, if you're not committed to personal transformation, you will not grow. I mean, that truth dawned on me in recent times. I understood how vital, important personal transformation is. You know, until you get to a certain age in life, some of these things will not really matter to you. There's a certain stage you get in life and you just get restless of where you are. You just get tired of where you are. You want change. You want to see something different. You want to experience something new. And that is where personal transformation comes in. It is an important, vital key to growth. And we've been talking about it and we talked about the process of growth, of personal transformation, sorry, we looked at the input, process, and output. You know, these key um, processes are so important for transformation. And I told you that we're going to look at the six stages of this process. And as I discuss each stage, you will know if it is the input, you will know if it is the process, and you will know if it is the output. Last week, we started with the first stage, which I call the stage, I call that stage realizing. I call it the light bulb moment. It is the first point of call if you are going to allow yourself go through this process of transformation. And what is this light bulb moment? The light bulb moment is that moment when light shines, it suddenly dawns on you that you need change. Because without the light bulb, light bulb moment, you will not be able to go through the process of personal transformation. It is that moment where you realize that something needs to give, that you are sick and tired of where you are something needs to give. You will get to a point in your life and when you get restless, that restlessness is what will cause you to break that chain off your neck. So that restlessness is this light bulb moment. Once that light bulb moment comes, you lose your peace. You go for change. You need change. You do everything possible to break that yoke off your neck. And that is where we, where, where we, where we stopped on Tuesday, so we're going to continue with the second stage. Sweet Spirit of the Most High God, you know I have no words of mine to speak. I depend on you wholly. I trust you totally. And Lord, I ask that you speak to us this evening. 
take mere words of mine and fire them into our hearts. So these words will burn within us. So these words will cause us to act and take action. So these words will be a constant reminder not to get comfortable at whatever stage in life we have found ourselves. Father, transform us. Sweet Holy Spirit, you are the numero uno agent of transformation. You are the chief transformer. I invite you into our hearts. I invite you and I ask you to take my words and use it to cause a change on our inside. Each and every one of us will live today pumped, knowing what to do in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. The second stage of transformation is an important stage. This stage, remember, the six stages are the six R's. So the first R is realize. Now, this second stage is release. You can also use remove for this second stage. It is a stage after you've realized that you need a change. You graduate into this second stage where you look at yourself. Now, you carry out, you know, you go through a process of self-reflection. You know, you reflect on your life, where you are, what has been going on around you, how life has been affecting you and how your environment has been affecting you. Then you look forward to where you want to be that you have not yet arrived. Then you identify some things around you that are present that needs to change. So when you identify those things, that need to change. What do you do? You release them. You remove them from your life. Those things need to go because they might have been facilitating stagnation. They might have been those things that have posed as a roadblock between where you are now and where you want to be. So you must remove them. You know, the Bible talked about Casting down every high thing, every vain imagination that has exalted itself above the knowledge of Christ. So when you are going through this process of uh, transformation, there must be some things you must cast down. Now, if you remember that one of the key things, tools of transformation, like I talked to you about, last week is information is knowledge so when you're going through the process of transformation and you have that aha moment what just happened light shone into the dark places of your ignorance and that light usually comes as information information that's why jesus said that you will know the truth the truth that you know will make you free. So you can see that obstacles, challenges that are before you remain there because knowledge, the required knowledge, the necessary light has not yet shone into those dark places of ignorance. Knowledge, information is key to personal transformation. Somebody said that you cannot grow beyond the things that you know. You cannot grow beyond the knowledge that you have. You know, your capacity is directly proportional to what you know. You, you are not equipped more than what you know. I don't need to understand what I mean. So knowledge, information is very important. So to move to the next level, you must pull down some knowledge, information that has posed a roadblock. You know, you know, it's, 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 it really amazes me that there are some people still living a life here on this earth that still believes that the earth is flat and not spherical. I mean, it, it amazes me. I understand if the Stone Age man thought 
that their word was flat. We're not at this stage <laughs> in, 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 in life, after all that advancement of technology, people still think, and I'm telling you, still think that the world is flat. You know, if you've watched this movie that we watched, I think in the 80s, um, the God must be crazy. You remember that that African Bushman was on a quest to go and throw that Coke bottle at the end of the earth because they thought that the earth was flat. So he believed that if he journeyed long enough, he will get to the end of the earth so he can throw that Coke bottle away. I mean, if that man still believes that, it's understandable because in his community, in his own world, that is the level of knowledge and information they have. He's limited. That is why as a human being, if you want to embark on change and personal transformation, you must also cultivate as a habit, you know, the, the, the drive, the desire for continuous learning. You must constantly go in search for knowledge to know. You must constantly, you know, have a critical and an analytic mind that constantly seeks information and knowledge. That's why I told you that one of the keys to personal transformation is that you must be open to information. So if you are that kind of person that is closed up to information, personal transformation is going to come very difficult for you. So you must be open. And now if you follow that Bushman's journey throughout the different parts of that movie, you will realize that his perception of life changed. Why? He left that small Bushman community and finally got into town, experienced a lot of things like cars, other things that existed outside his environment. That quest changed his life. That quest, you know, gave him so much light information that changed his life for good. So, until we start this journey, until we embark on this journey for personal transformation, you might just be stagnated. A lot of people have been praying, Father, I'm tired of the stage where I'm in. I am tired of this stagnation. I need a change. Father, I bring change, bring change. The truth is that the change you are praying for might just slide in your hands. You might just need, all you need is to go out and get information. All you need is to look within and pull down some of the things that has raised itself as a stronghold in your mind and change your perception and your perspective regarding those things. Until you release, until you remove those things, change will not come. Transformation will not come at all. And at times, this stage, if we don't embark on this stage by ourselves, if we don't take that decision on our own to pull down, release, erase, remove those things that have exalted itself in our minds on our own, we are usually forced into a process that will take care of that, especially for those that have a a, will I say a strong purpose in life. When you have a strong purpose in life and God is hell-bent that you will fulfill that purpose, if you don't pass yourself through that process, circumstances around you will force you to pass through that process. And I've seen that happen to a lot of people. Someone like Moses had a strong purpose for his life. He was supposed to lead, deliver God's people, not just deliver them from the oppressive Pharaoh, he was supposed to lead them as a nation into the promised land and help them establish as a nation. And like you know, it's very difficult for a new nation to be born, be established, 
and run smoothly. Go and ask Southern Sudan when they were when they were given the the opportunity to be a state of their own. The UN approved. Everybody voted, and they uh, abdicated from Sudan and became a nation for several years. For several years, that new nation went through war, civil war. Same thing with Nigeria. When the British gave us independence, how long did it take? Just a mere five, six years. We started fighting ourselves. So giving birth to a new nation, giving birth to a new life is usually difficult if it is not managed well. And the man that had that purpose was Moses. So what happened? He spent 40 years, 40 years as a prince in waiting, as a pharaoh in waiting in the palace. At his 40th year, he was forced into exile in Midian. Why? There was another stage of transformation that he needed to go through. So he was forced into that process. He was forged into this stage. Now, this same Moses that pulled out a sword and killed two Egyptians without batting an eyelid to take the kind of character that he was. By the time he concluded this process of, <laughs> of release, remove, the arrogant prince, the, the temperamental prince, the easily angered prince, the Bible recorded, this is God, talking about Moses, in Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, he said something, that Moses, the killer of his people, the temperamental prince of Egypt, is now the meekest man. The meekest man. God needed to transform that temperamental prince into a meek man that will lead his people not just ladies, people, that will be a custodian of enormous deep powers. Because if you see the kind of power that was at Moses' disposal, the templates of Egypt that God, that God plagued the Egyptians with through Moses needed a man that was meek so when he gets anointed with that kind of power, we'll control it. That's why in my own definition of meekness, I usually de define meekness like this. I say meekness is power under control. If God gave that prince of Egypt, the temperamental one, that kind of power, he would have mismanaged it. Moses carried so much power that when he died, Satan came immediately. To collect his body. Why? Trapped in his body was the residue of that power. And the Bible says that Angel Michael was sent to withstand Satan. And God hid Moses' body till date. Nobody knows where Moses was buried. The kind of power he carried. He needed to go through transformation in the desert of Midian under the tutelage of the high priest of Midian to, trans, to be transformed into a man that can carry that power necessary to deliver God's people. And that journey, that quest, that exile was forced on him. I tell this story to let you know that at times when the stage, like this stage two, you get to that stage in your life, and you don't on your own and back on that stage, circumstances might, might force it on you, might force you to go to that stage. You notice men that do not wait for that stage to be forced on them. A good example is Jesus our Lord. The Bible says that when he was baptized, he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. He needed to go through that process. The same process that Moses went through, remember, Moses is a shadow of Jesus. Now, because Moses did not complete his ministry and the second half of the second leg of his ministry was completed by Joshua, Moses and Joshua are shadows of Jesus. 
Moses delivered the people from the oppressor, Joshua took the delivered people into freedom in the promised land. And these are the two processes that Jesus wrought for us. Jesus delivered us. Let me say here how he delivered us from the dominion, from the region of darkness, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So Jesus played those two roles, the role of Moses and the role of Joshua. That is why the Hebrew name Joshua is, is a, a derivation of Yeshua, which is the name of Jesus. So Joshua is Jesus in the Old Testament. You know, he, he took the people into freedom. And that is what Jesus came to do. But before Jesus did that, concluded his assignment, what did he do? The Holy Spirit came on him, whispered in his heart, and led him into the wilderness. And Jesus willingly followed the prompting of the Holy Spirit, and he went into the wilderness. At times, we get those promptings on our inside, that something needs to change. The Holy Spirit on our inside prompts us, gives us that aha moment, whispering into our hearts that something needs to change. There's something that needs to change in your life. There's something or a habit you need to stop. There's something you need to remove. And at times, some of these things that need to be removed or released or erased in your life might be relationships. He will whisper in your heart, this person, that person, reduce your contact with that person. You know, don't be too close with this person. They are stopping you. They are serving as a roadblock between you and where you ought to be. That is why when you take the process of personal transformation very seriously, you are not sentimental because some of the things you need to cut off might be people that are dear to you. But because of the purpose, Jesus, the Bible says this about Jesus, that because of the joy that was set before him, he endured the process. He endured the cross. So Jesus went to the wilderness for some erasure, for some reset. And Bible said that when he came out from the wilderness, he came out full of power, <laughs> full of the Spirit, which is exactly what happened to Moses. When he came out from his own wilderness of media, the Bible says that he encountered God at the backside of the desert. God spoke to him through that burning bush. And God deposited power. <laughs> Figuratively using that rod he had in his hand. The same thing that happened to Moses was the same thing that happened to Jesus. Because of the purpose before you. Because of your destiny. Because of your vision. Because of the reason why you were born and sent here on earth. You need to undergo the process. If you don't willingly, like Jesus, obey the lead of the Spirit for you to pass through that process, at times that process might be forced down your throat because God's plan, God's purposes, God's counsel shall stand. Hallelujah. So the third stage, Oh my God, I need to hurry. The third stage is the stage I call the reformatting stage. Reformat, reset. You've realized that you need transform to be transformed. You've pulled down, erased, removed everything or any person that is posing as an obstacle between you and change. The third thing you now need to do is to reset, is to reformat. It's just like a computer, even your phone. When your phone is misbehaving, your computer is misbehaving, you might need to reset it. Maybe you got infected by a virus, you might need to reset it. You might need to reformat it. Because it's after you reset it and reformat it that you are able now to install the new software. You're able now to install the new software the new operating system 
that you require to run your life at this particular stage that you are at. If you've been listening to me for the past couple of weeks, you know I've talked to you about the pages of life. Whenever your life is, is like a book, and in that book there are different chapters. As you live life, you flip through those pages. When you finish a chapter, the next chapter arrives and you sh- must step into it. At times, it is not easy to step into it. At times, you must undergo change. At times, you must undergo preparedness for that next chapter. And some of the things that might happen is that you might change some concepts, some precepts, some ideas, some philosophies that you have. If not, you will not be able to enter that next stage in life. Now, when Jesus died, he did not just die for the Jews. He died for the whole world. Jews and the Gentiles. Now, the apostle that took over the administration of the church from Jesus was Apostle Peter. Now, Peter had a serious challenge, had a serious disadvantage. As the man that took over the church, to head the church, to lead the church, into the next chapter of the church after Jesus ascended, you would have thought that this gospel, which Jesus told them, and Jesus told them that in Acts chapter 1. He says, see, that this gospel of the kingdom must first be preached in Jerusalem, your local. But when you have done with, are done with Jerusalem, you need to take this gospel to your neighbors, Samaria, to Judea, Judah, sorry. That is the other parts of, of Israel. Then after Judah, you take it to Samaria. That is your neighbor. They are foreigners. Then after taking the gospel to Samaria, you need to hit the entire world. The, the outer parts of the world. The uttermost parts of the world. That was the instruction Jesus gave them. That was their mandate. But Peter, who is now the leader of the church, they're supposed to be the trans, not only the transitional leader from Jesus to this, the birth of the church, who was also supposed to like help establish the church, had a serious disadvantage that militated against him being the right candidate to take the gospel to Samaria, just their neighbor, talk less the uttermost parts of the world. And Jesus, while he was here, prepared them for that. Because the Jews are, for the lack of a better word, very, very tribalistic because of their religion. Now, they've had God and Judaism for thousands of years. So, it has been indoctrinated into them, put into them, that they are God's special people. So they have what we call a superiority complex. Their super ego is on a different level. So they see themselves as a higher class of humans than the rest of the world. And you could say that they are right to think that way. Because in that world, God was only interacting with Israel. So you won't blame them too much. But that became a stronghold because... They thought that they were the custodian of God. Now, at this stage in in history, they are also the custodian of the gospel. So even when God needed Peter to go and preach to the centurion, Cornelius, it was very hard for Peter to do that. God needed to show Peter several visions for him to agree to go and preach to Cornelius. Now, where's Cornelius? Cornelius was the Roman centurion. He is a heathen. Paul, being a devout Jew, found it, sorry, Peter, being a devout Jew, found it difficult to take this gospel to the Gentile. And yet, Jesus instructed them to do that. Jesus even prepared them while he was here on earth by giving several parables. A good example is the Good Samaritan. He gave the parable of the Good Samaritan to show and to teach the disciples that, hey, that these people you call outcasts, unbelievers, Gentiles, are better humans, more often than not, than you guys that have dealt with God for thousands of years. 
And yet, with all those teachings, with the final instruction of Jesus, it was still hard for Peter to do that. Peter needed to pull down that stronghold to erase, <laughs> remove that stronghold in his mind. But God could not wait for that process to be completed. Did Peter finally go through that process of personal transformation? Yes. If you follow history, he died in Rome. That means he finally left Jerusalem and became also a missionary to the Gentiles. And he preached Christ to them. But it took him a while. But in God's timeline, God needed somebody to push the gospel. Because time is of the essence. When a man that found a movement dies, the, few, the next few years after his death is critical to either the survival of that movement, to the failure or to the success of that movement. So God knows this. So what did God do? While he's still working on Peter, Jesus himself, God sent Jesus himself to head hunt another man that did not have that stronghold in his mind because of his own upbringing because of his exposure you now begin to see that exposure is also a key ingredient to transformation paul was very exposed unlike peter to the gentile world paul was learned paul went to school bible says that he, he had, his professor was gamelia a well-known professor a pharisee so, Paul went to school. So, he was enlightened. You see, light, knowledge, information is critical to personal transformation. So, God had haunted one of his enemies, the core enemy of the church. A man in the forefront of standing before the church to ensure that the church does not expand. The chief persecutor of the church, Jesus had haunted him. There was something about Paul that Jesus needed. And what was that thing? He did not have that stronghold. He did not need to go through the process of release, remove, erase. All he needed was a reformat. All Paul needed was a reset. He was hopping from city to city, smoking out Christians, persecuting them, killing them, that same thing he was doing, God needed it to advance the gospel. So he had haunted him, still sent him on his duty of hopping from city to city. But instead of smoking out Christians to kill them, he hopped from city to city, spreading the gospel. That was why he was the greatest evangelist. He was the greatest man that God used to spread this gospel. On my bucket list is to travel to Turkey. Traveling to Turkey is on my bucket list. Not to go and buy clothes or for business, no. Whenever When I go to Turkey, I'm going to make sure I go to all the ancient Christian sites. Now, when you go to Turkey, you're going to see all these churches you read about in the Bible. Most of them, 70 to 80% of them, are in that country, Turkey. And in that country, Turkey, all these Galatians, all these churches, you know, book of the Bible you read. They are in that in, in that in that country. Paul was the one that traveled to that country and some portions of ancient Greece carrying this gospel of the kingdom to all those places because he did not have that stronghold. A lot of people are stuck at number two. He took Paul to come on that great assembly in Jerusalem. And they, he, he, he debated why the Gentiles deserve the gospel. He debated why the Gentiles do not need to go through the ritualistic laws under the Old Testament, especially circumcision, for them to qualify to become Christians. So after that meeting, that was when Peter's stage two was in full cycle after that meeting peter got <laughs> a release <laughs> from that stronghold soon after that meeting you could read in the acts of the apostle that peter started traveling he was in samaria he was in joppa he was in several cities and that's how 
he now left Jerusalem preaching the gospel. He had a purpose, a strong destiny. That is why they say the first Pope, according to the Roman Catholic Church, is Peter. That's why we have in the Vatican, St. Peter Basilica. He died in Rome. He died in Rome. That was his destiny. But imagine if he did not go through stage two. Imagine if he did not change his mind. That destiny, that purpose would not have been actualized. For you to achieve that purpose God has for you. For you to achieve that destiny, God make sure that you are born at the right year, right month, right hour, right day, in the right family and country. For you must embark on the process of personal transformation. Very key that you do. You must embark on that process. Just like Peter did. 